Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to this lecture. This lecture, I want to talk about uh, data analysis. And uh, before starting that, I'm sure you have uh, seen this or read this in uh, the definitions. We have two types of data. One is qualitative data, and the other one is quantitative data. Qualitative data describes qualities or characteristics, also called uh, categorical data. Examples of that can be colors, cars. If you are in a group or you ask a group, what's your favorite color and what's your favorite car? The information you get from them is a data and data is information and there's no numbers involved. So that's called a quantitative, qualitative data. Quantitative data is any quantifiable information that can be used for mathematical calculation or statistical analysis. Examples of that can be test scores, number of calories, age, and so on. So you can use mathematics and to get, uh, do the statistical analysis. Now, <clears throat> in this video, we're gonna talk about qualitative data. So, but before to get there, the next thing, I want you to know is when we deal with statistics, we always have a population, which can be very large, or sometimes it's not that large. Or inside the population, we have samples. So sample is part of the population. Usually it's not easy to get information from the entire population. So for example, if I say, uh, and I saw that, uh, heard that on the radio that 87 of Americans or people living in America do not like their job. So, or information like 30% of Americans drink coffee in the morning. So these are our percentages, but when we hear information like this, we wonder where they got that information because nobody asks us if we like our job or we drink coffee in the morning. So the way they get that, they serve a, they survey a sample, they get information from the sample and they make conclusions about the population. So that's part of the statistics. Why they can't ask the entire population, as I told you, sometimes the population involves millions of people and surveying all of them takes a lot of time and money. That's why statistics has been created to use the formulas and get those numbers. It's not always exact and it, uh, your sample has to present the population or has to be a representative of the population. So sometimes it's biased, however it works. And that's part of this class. We're gonna learn how we can do that. Now coming to the sample, we have sample statistics. So first of all, we have the sample mean, this is the average, which the notation for the mean is X bar. Then we have sample standard deviation, which is S and be patient, I'll tell you what that is. And we have the sample proportion, which is P hat. So that's P hat. Proportion if uh, it's just the percentages. When I say 30% of Americans drink coffee in the morning, that's a proportion. But that's the population proportion. For the sample, you can just, I can just uh, survey our class and ask who drinks coffee in the morning. Now coming to population, the population mean is mu. That's a Greek letter. It's not M, it's mu. You read it mu. The population standard deviation is lowercase sigma. You know, uppercase sigma is written like this, and that sum will get to that. And the population proportion is just p without the half. So these are sample statistics. We can calculate those. These are population parameters. They're not very obvious to calculate sometimes because you're dealing with millions of people. So what uh, we can do, we can estimate those if the population size is very big. Now let's start with an example. Let's do some calculations. We're gonna start with the simple data. So 
So these are, imagine these are test scores. So I think uh, picked and uh, we have 15 of them. So the sample size in this case is 15. I pick 15 students from our class and I record the test scores and that's what I get. So the first thing you wanna find is the mean. Whenever you have test scores or I give you the test scores and that's you're very interested to find the mean or the average because you wanna know how you did comparing to the class. For example, if your test score is 30 and the mean or the average is 15, that means comparing yourself to the class, you did pretty well. If uh, your test score is 30 and the average is 80, then comparing to the class, you did not do very well on that exam. So again, let's get to the formula. So it's X bar equals to sum of X's over N. This is just sum. If you haven't seen this before, for example, if I have three numbers, X1 is two, X2 is four, and X3 is five. If I see, if I write that notation, Sigma I starting from one to three, x sub i, that means add x1 plus x2 plus x3 and stop at three. And uh, if you add them again, you substitute and you get those numbers. In statistics, you're not gonna do see these numbers when you just see sum of x's, that means add all the numbers in the data. So, and again, if you add all the numbers, you get 978. The sample size is 15 because we have 15 numbers in the data. So you get 65.2. And if we deal with whole numbers, you always round off the mean to the nearest 10. That means one number after the decimal point. But today we're gonna just pick 65 because it's easier and uh, to see in the calculations. The second item is the median. The median is the middle of the data when written in ascending order. Ascending order, that means from the smallest to the largest. So you can write the, you write the data in ascending data and it's the middle number, but there's a way to calculate that. The location of the median is N plus one divided by two. So in this case, we have 15 plus one divided by two, it's eight. So it's the eight number. Again, eight is not the median, eight, eight is the location. The median is 75, which is at the eight location. If this number was 8.5, then you take the average of the eight number and the ninth number. Next is the mode. The mode is the most repeated number in the data. In this case is 42. And if I go back to the data, 42 is repeated a couple of times. So that's 42 is the mode of our simple data. I put a couple of nodes for the no mode here. If you have two, eight, seven, two, three, let's say if we have this data, the modes are two and eight because they're both repeated twice. We say this data is bimodal. If you have this data, 2872382.10, the mode is only two because two is repeated three times, but eight is repeated twice. Or if you have these numbers, if no numbers are, is repeated, no number is repeated, then there is no mode. Next, finding the standard deviation. Let's get used to the formula and I'll tell you how it's used. Standard deviation is square root of n times sum of x squared. Remember that minus sum of x, the quantity squared, divided by n times n minus one. We know n is 15 for our data, so that's the sample size. What we need is x squared. So you take each number in the data and you square it. So two squared is 4, 39 squared is 15, 21, and so on. Then you need the sum. The sum means you have to add all these numbers. And I did that. I got 74,188. Minus the sum of x's are just the sum of these numbers. We calculated that for the mean also is 978. So coming back to the formula, to write that and substitute. So it's 15, the sample size times 74,188, which is sum of x squared minus 
978, which is sum of x's, and you square that, and if you use your calculators, you're going to get 744.46, and you have to take square root of that, that's what you get. Rounding of the standard deviation is the same as the mean. If the, you deal with whole numbers, then you round it to the nearest hand, one digit after the decimal point. But today, again, we're going to just pick a whole number because it's going to make the calculations easier and you're going to seeing it better. Now, this number here under the radical or the radicand is called the variance of the data. So what is variance by definition is standard deviation squared. So if I take standard deviation and square that, I get 744.46. Now let's see how slowly get used to using the standard deviation. You can draw a number line. Right in the middle, you can write X bar or the sample mean which we found to be 65. To the right, you go x bar plus one standard deviation, x bar plus two standard deviation, and x bar plus three standard deviation. To the left, you write x bar minus one standard deviation, x bar minus two standard deviation, and x bar minus three standard deviation. If I place my numbers, if you do those calculations, you get these numbers. Now, if I place my numbers on top of this number line, so the first number was 2, which is between negative 16 and 11. Then we had 39, 42, couple of times, 45, 51. And if you place them, these numbers are all between 38 and 65. Then it's after the mean. We had all these numbers, so I placed all 15 numbers. So here on top of where they belong. And uh, this is what you get. Now, one thing, if we had, here we had 15 numbers, but if we had, let's say, 1,000 numbers, as we see, most of the numbers are around the mean, close to the mean. So if I kind of draw the distribution, we get a distribution like this, and this looks familiar because this is just the bell-shaped curve. Or if that happens, you say the data is normally distributed. Now, the next thing I want you to notice, any number that is between minus 2s and plus 2s, or the mean plus 2s and the mean minus 2s, this range is for usual numbers for this data. And any number after those, it's unusual. So in this case, 2 falls in the unusual range. So two is called to be an unusual number for this data. Now you can have a question like this. How many standard deviations is two away from the mean? So two is here. I want to know how many of those distances two is away from the mean. And if we count, we have one, two, and two point something. So if you want to get the exact number, of that, what you do is you calculate the z-score. So the number was 2 minus the mean divided by standard deviation. This is the formula for the z-score. And if you do that, you get negative 2.33. And please round it to the nearest 100, two digits after the decimal point. And why is it negative? Because it's to the left of the mean. Now, if we say that then here, number eight, I said find the z score for all the values in the data. So, and uh, this is a good practice for you, just find one by one. We got z of two, then you can do z of 39 by using, it's just getting used to this formula because you're going to see this a lot in the course. So, we see we get the negative numbers first, and then we start getting positive numbers from here. All the negative numbers are before the mean, and all the positive z scores are after the mean. And this z score is less than negative two. And that's another way of saying that two is an unusual number. But the highest z score or the highest number actually is 1.26. So 99 is not an unusual number. 
Now, one, what else? We have, one thing we can do also, this is what we had before. So you saw that, that what we can do is find the z-scores for these numbers. If you find the z-scores for those numbers, then the mean, the z-score for the mean use the formula, you're gonna get zero. The z-score for 92 is one and so on. Then you get three, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So instead of having all these numbers, when you calculate the z-scores, you get a nice number line. And any z-score from negative two to two is unusual. And then, or is usual, any z-score after that or before this is, is unusual. So, and these are different z-scores that uh, we can have. One thing also, if we take a test and I, you don't have, I don't give you your score or uh, anything, but I just tell you the Z score for your exam was 1.5. If it's 1.5 is positive, that means you did above the average. So that's not bad. So you should be happy. If I give you your uh, test back and I don't give you your score, I just say the Z score for your uh, test score was 2.5, then you should be very, very happy because you did unusually good on that exam. If I give you back the test and the z-score is negative, that means you did below the average. And this is just an information. When Einstein took the IQ test, his z-score was 3.4. One more thing about standard deviation, if the data has a small, each data has a different uh, standard deviation. So for the data itself, if the numbers are very close to each other, then the standard deviation is small. You're gonna see a curve like that. If we deal with a large standard deviation, then the curve is gonna look like that. So if numbers are closer to each other, then the standard deviation is small. If the numbers are larger and uh, far away from each other, then the standard deviation, it's more spread, it's gonna be larger. So it's just a distance from the mean to a number. Uh, when you calculate, it shows the spread of the data. I think that's good enough for this video. In the next uh, video, you're gonna see uh, that I will talk about percentage, cold lies, and five numbers, so many, and all that. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you on my uh, next video. Have a great one.